Imagine a system of eight nodes. These can be considered as web servers for simplicity. As the system is decentralized, there exists no node that connects to all other nodes. If the system were centralized, it would look something like this. This is how Napster's system was implemented, where the node in the middle was a central index server and it connected to all other nodes slash servers. With a distributed hash table, there is no need for a central indexer. In a DHT, each node connects to only its direct neighbors, ensuring the system is decentralized. With that out of the way, how does a DHT work with retrieving and inserting values? Within each node lies the tried and tested hash table. Nothing fancy about it. It behaves like normal. Once a request arrives at the correct server, it's as simple as performing a standard hash table lookup. The interesting part is how a request gets to the correct server. With no central indexer and the ability for a request to begin at any node, it would seem we're lost without said indexer. Here is where the server keys come in. Imagine a request for data key 4.2 arrives at server 6. Which server has the data key? This is where the server keys come in. Aside from one exception, all data keys in any one server are less than that of the service key. So in this case, server 2 owns all data keys that are between 1 and 2, inclusive of 1, exclusive of 2. Server 3 owns all data keys that are between 2 and 3, and so on. The only exception is the first server, 1 in this case. This server contains the normal keys that are less than it, but also contains all keys that are greater than the final server's key. So for this example, one owns all data keys less than one and all data keys greater than or equal to eight. Now back to the example. Server six sees the key is not in its range. More specifically, it's less than it. So that means we should send the request to the neighboring server with the key that is less than the current. So we follow the edge to server 5. Server 5 sees the key is in its range, so it attempts to access its inner hash table. If the key exists, then we return it to the sender of the request. Otherwise, we indicate it doesn't exist. And that's how a simple request works. Other operations on a DHT follow a similar procedure. An insert is virtually the same as get, but you just insert into the internal hash table instead. For removing and adding new nodes slash servers, the difficulty comes with transferring the appropriate values to the new slash next node. For example, if server 3 was deleted, all keys in server 3 would be transferred to server 4. The new system would be as shown, with server 4 now accounting for all keys between 2 and 4. Now if server 3 were to be re-added, that is join, all keys less than the joining server would need to be added into the new server. That is to say, all keys less than 3 would be added into 3, returning the system to exactly how it was. Normally these nodes wouldn't have simple keys of 1 through 8. They would normally be hashed and evenly distributed over the range. Additionally, node 1 wouldn't be bounded by infinity on either end. Instead, it would likely be from 0 to 1 and 8 to the maximum key value. In this case, these values were just used for simplicity's sake. And that's DHTs in a nutshell.